Oh, testing, testing. All right, this is working. All right, everyone, thank you for joining us today. So while our participants are putting their equipment on, I'm just gonna give you a short little introduction. So we're here to give you a brief demonstration of kendo, which is Japanese sword fighting. Uh, so as they get their stuff on, we're gonna explain the equipment a little bit, hopefully give you enough knowledge about what the heck we're doing so that we can show you a, a good sparring match. So, how many of you know what a katana is? Right? It, it is pretty iconic. So, contrary to popular belief, we don't actually fight with swords and kendo. There are several other arts, but we do use these. Do you know what this is made out of? Metal. Oh, no, not quite metal. This is actually wood. And so if we hit each other with this, it probably hurts a lot. Might break a bone but it's not gonna kill our partner. But really what we primarily use is this. You guys ever see this on WWE? People whacking each other. Colloquially, we'll call it a kendo stick, but we call it a shinai. It's really a, a, a term more, uh, more similar to calling it a bamboo sword. Now they're a little straight, but we can actually hit each other with less restraint with these. So we actually primarily practice with these. Okay. So go ahead, come on up. All right, so we have Zach Boxen here, Joaquin Perez, Cindy Chen, and Kate Nakamura are coming on up. And they're actually wearing what we call our kendo bogu, our kendo armor. So they're gonna be our models. It's not quite as hot as the fashion show we just had, but they're gonna show us you know, what we wear. All right, so starting from the top, you know, the head is probably one of the most important parts of our body, right? So we want to protect that, right? That's the real money maker up here. So we call this the men. It actually protects many of the key areas. There's this grill in front for visibility, but this claw is actually futon, almost like the big fancy beds you might get and sleep on. So it's really, uh, it's like a giant gym sock. So we don't actually wash these in the washing machine afterwards. They soak up our sweat, we have to kind of wipe them down. But So Kendo's not known for smelling all that well. But, fortunately you guys are, what, 30 feet back. So, you know, we can show you our Kendo without you having to smell us. All right, so next kind of going on down, we also have our wrist protectors. These are our Kote. <laughs> going on down, we also wear breastplates, we call them Dol. And then just for a little bit of added protection down further on our body. We have what we call the tare. So underneath that, the uniform we're wearing is reminiscent of what the samurai actually wear. So, uh, like very different than judo, where you just wear normal pants and probably a similar Japanese style top. We wear what's called the hakama. Some people jokingly call these our dresses, but they're actually pants, they're split down the middle, but they have folds, which are supposed to sort of signify Confucian values that were important to the samurai. So that's one of the distinguishing uh, things about the kendo uniform uh, relative to some of the other Japanese martial arts, maybe Aikido and some other uh, swordsmanship, you'll also see the hakama uh, play. So, you guys want to get to hitting each other? All right. All right, that's what you guys came here for, right? All right, so let, let's go ahead and get our pairs. And as always, ladies first. Since the crowd is kind of biased that way, we'll kind of work around here. All right, so ritualistically, we always start with a draw. We imagine we're drawing the sword in a sword duel between two opponents. So this is not a battlefield with numerous opponents, this is two people. All right, so, good, good.
And gentlemen, go ahead and draw your swords as well. And now the standing in what we call the sokyo position, this is a neutral position where neither of them can attack. So once they stand up, now they're facing off. All right, so let's give them a little warm up. They're gonna do a drill, what we call kirigashi. All right, let's go both sides together just because this is less interesting. All right, so kirigashi, ikai, hajimen. It's gonna get warmed up. So the key thing about Kendo is as much as you get to hit someone, you also have to get hit. So it's kind of a give and take. All right, this is a, a, a sort of a, a cosmic balance that we have to do. Other side, go ahead and warm up. Kirikashi. So we're going to show a good basic strike. So ladies, go ahead, showmen, nice and big, three times each. Jip. All right, so in case you get, didn't get to see that, go ahead, Cindy, go ahead. of uh, this ideal kendo strike, right? So first thing, do you hear them saying what they're hitting? They're saying men, right? So we're gonna try to get a little bit of crowd engagement. Why don't you guys ki with us? We call this the ki. This is the projection of your energy. So all together, can we say men on the count of three? One, two, Right? So we're saying this to actually show that we meant to attack that target. This wasn't by chance, this was because we wanted to do it. So a hit without a key eye, that's the first thing, it won't count. Second thing, you have to actually hit, right? So if you don't hit it, well, eh, you know, what are we doing, right? The second aspect that we don't actually hear very well is actually a stomp on the ground. Usually we're in a gym or somewhere with a nice wooden floor, so this is really killing their feet. So if you see uh, Joaquin back there, Crocs are not a standard issue part of our kendo equipment. He's just very fashionable, okay? So, gentlemen, can you come forward and show us small men strikes? So we, we have large strikes, and that's for good sort of fundamental attacks, but we kind of sportify it up a little bit by doing smaller hits. So sashimi. Sankai, So you notice Joaquin's not actually reaching to do a nice big strike. It's less obvious. It's much more quick. So this is part of the sport aspect. He's relying on his wrist strength and not just brute strength. Alright, and let's get Zach some warm up as well. So this follow through, you might have seen like in samurai movies, the duels, right? The two swordsmen dashed by each other and a cut is performed and then one guy bleeds out and falls. And so it's a little overly dramatic. It's something along the lines of what we're going for in these follow throughs. So it's not just hit and standing, 
it's showing that the energy is projecting through and you're passing on by. All right. So next striking area is actually what we call that we mentioned earlier, it's the colté. So we're really trying to hit just the top of the wrist. So let's go ahead, ladies up front, we'll go ahead and show some nice large colté strike. So ladies follow similar fundamentals. So we're just really driving through. We've done the men. Next we're going to do colté, the wrist. All right. Go ahead, ladies. Just Cindy. Right, it makes a nice little pop. You can hear that futon, the cloth armor. All right, so audience, right? You've learned men. So say with us together, quote it. As loud as you can in your battle cry. Let's hear it on the count of three. One, two, and... Come here. Right, good. Thank you. See? Now you know two strikes. You've learned with us. So, gentlemen, forward, please. We're going to show the small version, the sportier version of Kulte. It exists as well. All right, Sashi Kulte, Sakai, Haijun! You see how much less movement there actually is to pull this off. Especially with the hands forward, this is supposed to be a debilitating strike if you actually sever the tendons in the hand. Go ahead, keep going. Now during the, a normal practice, we might actually practice these strikes hundreds of times. So it's, it's just like a boxer has to punch. They're not counting their punches. They're doing many, many strikes. Guys, one more time. We're going to illustrate this, if you will. These guys give me a hard time sparring. It's hard keeping up. I right, thank you guys. And that's pulled it. All right, so we're going to go to the third strike. The third strike. The dole, the waist strike. Now, it's just really trying to disavow your opponent. And so that it's got a very fancy follow through. So let's go ahead. Let's do doge, sankai. Kind of smart. So it makes a big sound, right? in terms of combat, it's kind of weird that we would strike the armor with our swords. Um, but that's an indication that Kendo is actually training in unarmored combat. Go ahead and continue with Dole. So that's why we wear the armor to cover those vulnerable areas. But the ideal training situation that we're imagining is that we're actually not in armor. So this is more of a different situation. It's creating a look similar to samurai armor, but we're not actually doing sort of battlefield combat in that regard. Gentlemen, can we get some dole too? If you notice, I think our club ranks among the more sort of flashier in terms of the dole. Um, Japanese traditions, they probably wear mostly black, right? They don't like to stick out or look different, but I think we're expressing ourselves a little bit more, so that's our American side. All right, gentlemen, dole, please. Want to get dressed? So there's a lot of body to cut through by attacking Dole, so that's why it sounds potentially a little louder. So that's our third hit. So on count of three, can you say dole with me? One, two, and dole. Right? So now you know kendo, right? 
Now, there's one sort of less common fourth attack that we do. And this is actually not something you learn until you're around the black belt level. It's called ski. It's to the net. So from here, and this is awkward with one hand, it actually involves stepping forward, boom, and thrusting the throat of your opponent. So this is not something we're going to have our, our folks, you know, do to each other, but just keep in mind that's the fourth attack. So we've done four attacks already. You guys all know men, kode, do. So now we're going to show some counter attacks. Right, so we don't just blindly do these big strikes at each other. We kind of can read each other. So let's go ahead, ladies up front. All right, so what was the head strike called again? <laughs> men, right? Those who said men, you're right. Anything else? Eh, partial credit, right? So men. So in this case, like, who's going to be attacker? Who's the aggressor? Cindy's kind of got the red door. I think she's kind of like the, the, the bloodthirsty one. So in this situation, Cindy is going to go for Meg. She's going to try to hit Kay's head. Kay's going to respond knowing that that is coming. All right. So let's go ahead and let's see a good men counterattack. What did she hit? <laughs> Almost there. Doll, right? So she blocks the man, swings the shinai back around, and hits the doll. So let's get two more, please. I want to go fast. All right, and one more time. Nice. Okay, so then let's have the gentleman show that same thing. So that was a man counter. So we call that men for the attack. And the counter is what we call kaishido. So there's a whole list of all these different techniques that we may actually spend very specific time practicing. I right, said, so gentlemen, let's get three men kaishido. Zach, go ahead and be the aggressor. You see, now we're ramping up the tempo a little bit, showing. Again, I love those Crocs. I gotta get myself there. All right, gentlemen, thank you. All right, ladies. So, what was the wrist called again? Called it, right? So, we're gonna actually see what happens when our bloodthirsty opponent wants to go for called it, but our, 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 our stalwart hero here is going to counter that. All right, let's see a good called it counter. What happened there? So, Cindy goes for the colté. Kay gets her hands out of the way. Oh, it's a miss. And responds with a men strike. And this can happen very quickly. So let's see, let's get two more, please. That was really fast. I don't know if I could have responded that quickly. All right, let's go one more. Nice. Thank you, ladies. All right, gentlemen, let's see that as well. I'm trying to get them warmed up. So, again, we, we have our basic strikes, right? Men, kote, and do. Kendo's simple, but not easy, right? We have relatively few things to do, but a lot of variations. Let's go again, kote counters. Sometimes, you know, we get to play around with each other. All right, thank you guys. So, you guys now have a, a sort of an idea about really what we're trying to do in kendo, right? The strikes, sometimes some of the variations. You guys want to see these guys spar? You want to see a match? Yes. All right. Woo. All right. All right, cool. So, so, let's go ahead. Sydney and Kay, and I'm going to try to judge this. Usually, a sporting kendo match involves three judges and a whole lot of flags. So if two out of three of those judges actually think it was a good strike that has, what did we talk about earlier? The strike, 
the key eye, and what we did here, the stomp, that's what constitutes a good hit, right? So Kendo's looking for an ideal hit, it's not just a random hit. So we're not street fighting, we're not just trying to whack each other, we're trying to whack each other in a very uh, ceremonial way. All right, so let's go ahead. Remember, this is our neutral position. Today. Sometimes a match can go quite a while before resolution. And it happened pretty quickly. So I said, Kote Ari means there was a Kote strike. Cindy was very fast at that and landed one. So then, right? So we're doing how many out of three? Two out of three wins, right? So let's go. Nihomen! Building up. Ooh, almost, almost. Here, go ahead, give it your best. Fight, oh, fight, oh! Nice. Now this feels like a, a ring, right? Okay, he gets a men's strike of opportunity. Show, buddy. Right, and they assume Sonkyo, neutral position. A big part of Kendo. What we call the rate is the, the, the manners. They're bowing to each other to thank each other for a match well fought. Okay? And so this is a fundamental part of Kendall. I right, thank you ladies. Let's give them a hand. You guys want to see one more? All right. We're going to have our gentlemen go at it. Let's see if this Crocs gives Joaquin some air. So right off the gate, Joaquin runs in, gets that men's strike. Sometimes a match can resolve very quickly, so being on your guard at all times is very important. You know what? Ooh, just to prolong the fun, I'm not going to give that to you, Joaquin. <laughs> Ooh, he's a jerk, right? I'm a jerk. That's okay. Oh, pretty close one. I think my eyes are getting too old and slow. It looked like Zach maybe got that man, but we'll prolong the action even further. We'll call a pause. Always wear protection, folks. All right, let's continue, Hajjman. You see them using their whole body and committing to the strike, right? Sometimes there's no holding back. Close one, but it was blocked. See the energy in those tips. 
Good follow through. I said maybe they need to move a little bit more, right? So then that's a good example. Strikes happened, but it didn't have all of the elements. Ooh, Manari! Is that Shobari? All right, Shobari. All right, please give him a hand. Well fought. That's about it we have for you guys from the Kendo Club. And again, these young folks came out from the UC Davis Kendo Club, so it's a long drive for us, and we hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be out there in the side changing if you have any questions for us. But thank you again. You've been great. Thank you again.